Right. This is not the talk I've given the last two workshops. Right. Although we'll cover the same sort of territory because it's important to have some idea of the um, history, the background to the Morris. And I say it's important because so often teams have brochures or they talk to the local newspaper and things like this. And they say things that they believe in all good faith, which are demonstrably wrong. And it doesn't help the image of the Morris that in fact we uh, mislead people. Having said that, of course, when it comes to doing a public performance on your own in front of a, a local crowd, um, it's the situation of the fairground barker where what they say is part of the entertainment, is not part of the factual background of what you're going to see or be involved in. You know, um, there's a serious element and a, um, the fun element. I'm a great believer in the fun side of things and so on. Um, Bath City, for example, used to, at the end of a show, go into the pub and have a drink. Then we'll put on their mats or coats, get on their knees, on their knees, now think about it, and walk out on their knees singing hi-ho, hi-ho, <laughs> it's off to home we go, and so on. And it usually bring the pub down uh, with laughter all round, you know, it was a ridiculous thing to do, but that's really the Morris. Um, I'm a firm believer in the sort of humour you see in Nas the Summer Wine. Um, one of the great things about the free view in the Yesterday Channel is you can see a new episode every day and three at the weekend. Um, <laughs> Uh, and yes, and my wife and I sit there because we understand that sort of humour. It reminds me so much of Morris dancers I've met. Not that they're elderly, it's this sense of humour. <laughs> you know, they do the sort of silly things that Morris dancers, they're not silly, are they? Um, but they are the humorous. They are, they are funny um, and so on. And that's, in a sense, part of the... Um, philosophy of life of Morris dancers, you know, um, the aim is to be entertaining or something rather. Now, I need to start by saying I spent a lifetime worrying about where our dancers come from, quite naturally, because we don't know. Um, Fifty years or more ago, it was the thought that the Morris dancers had their origins in fertility dancers. And they quoted dancers like bean setting. We did it. The crossover bean setting just now, you know. Um, but there's no indication that that sort of dance is ancient. In fact, there's no indication that any of the dances that we do is ancient. Um, I was reading a book called Dancing in the Street about um, the sort of uh, free-for-all type enjoyment that people have. And it makes the point that coming back in about the year naught, uh, in the classical um, empire of Rome and Greece and so on, there were mystery cults. And they believed in lots of good dancing, lots of noise and so on. In fact, all the standard things, you had dancing, you had a music, you um, painted your face, you wore a special costume, you did rehearsed dances, um, you shared food and you shared drink. Having said that, you will recognise that this is the, a, um, a definition of carnival, it's a definition of uh, industrial protest, it's in fact it's a definition of modern sport. You know, um, as you know, or perhaps you don't know, if you want to watch a football match, you watch it on television. If you go to the football match, because you want to be part of the action, you know, part of what's going on, the Mexican way, the shouting, the abuse, and whatever else goes on and so on, you know. Um, it's being part of something or other, right? And the origins of the Morris is a full weight from the early history of this sort of thing. It's probably not mentioned by the Christian churches 
But um, under the um, influence of Paul, the Christian religion changed from the message of Jesus, which was one of, um, he was a Jew and believed in strict Jewishness, and he believed in his message was one of, in fact, um, not generalising what the Jewishness thing, but actually um, making them even firmer rules to actually follow. Paul saw a different sort of person in it, and that's the religion that we've inherited. They also inherited the, the esoteric dancing, church services with... Um, they had no pews because people got up. That's the, um, the deacons, the priests and so on, joined in the general dancing. It was something or other which went on. It wasn't until we got into the Middle Ages, we're talking about 11th and 12th century, that the Christian church started to want to get the dancers outside of the church and take the thing a little more seriously. And over a century or so, the exotic dancing was pushed outside, first of all into the churchyard and then to the street. It then became known as carnival. Unfortunately, the dressing up side of it, uh, as people got, um, society got a bit more prosperous and so on, um, that became a more a dressing up to show your superior attitude. And it gradually developed into processions of um, civic authorities, guild authorities, and so on. And the processions then meant that the average population stood and watched. So entertainment had to be introduced into the processions. So bands were produced and um, dancing in procession. And that's where the Morris first appeared. But as far as we know, The Morris appeared seriously in 1500 in this country. Now, it's an important date to remember. There are a number of articles that have appeared in the literature uh, which are labelled Morris artefacts. They are, as far as the evidence is concerned, they are exotic imports from, by tourists from abroad. You can't actually say, they were, there's no evidence they were produced in England. Um, there had already appeared where people, were, um, people with money were touring Europe and bringing things back. Certainly in Europe, there are references to a Morris appearing as early as 1450. And in fact, the very earliest reference to the Goldsmith Company in London of Morris dancing in London is probably that. We can't say it's anything more than uh, a visiting foreign troop. It would be nice if it was English, but you can't actually claim that. But in 1500, um, with the arrival of uh, Catherine of Aragon, whose parents had actually cleared the Moors uh, out of Spain a few years before, and, and she attended the invasion of Granada, so um, she was aware of it and so on, and she, as far as, far as local uh, legends concerned, when she arrived, um, she arrived at Plymouth and worked her way up the country. She met Henry VIII and um, Prince Arthur at Dogmersfield House, as it was in those days, and she had a blackamoor uh, with her who actually did the Morris. Uh, that's what the local people uh, remember, anyhow. Um, so, about then. Now, I mentioned 1500 because in 1513 was the first mention of Morris dancing in Reading. And there's a group uh, trying to do a reenactment of what the Morris would have been in 1513. Now, there are problems with this. First of all, that it was not the Tudor period and they weren't wearing trunk hose, they were wearing tights and they were rather, rather elaborate pleated jackets and things of that sort. So there is a problem of trying to um, find what the dress was going to look like, and uh, what the materials were going to look like, besides worrying what was the tunes and what were the dances, and so on. But the 
evidence of illustrations and so on is really um, a chain dance in a line six or more and so on. Again, the evidence is confusing because, as always, the people who do the paintings or the illustrations don't know what they're looking at. Right? But most typically, they're joined hand in hand, they're facing alternate directions, and they're doing one, two, three hops. Right? Now, we will try in a minute what that actually means, because in fact, you can't do it without actually changing hands, doing something wrong. In other words, the conventional reconstruction doesn't work, and so on. The social dance of the time were chains, all facing the same way, doing steps. Anybody who's tried international dancing and colas knows exactly what you mean. Now, um, as an aside, on one of my trips to Australia, I went to talk to the curator of the Adelaide Museum because they had a very fine exhibition, or, uh, yeah, exhibition of Aboriginal artefacts. And I had it there, my naive days, thought, um, if the Morris has ancient origins, what Stone Age people did would be very interesting. Um, within two or three minutes of speaking to him about the, on this sort of line, he laughed and said, I got it all wrong. What the Aboriginals had is a culture that's 10,000 years of fossilization. You've no idea what it was like they started but they had 10,000 years to refine what they did. And they could see no connection with what any surviving Stone Age people said did in this world to what people would have done in this country. And that's one of the reasons why um, you can ignore the fact that we actually have dancers based on fertility rights and things of that sort. We'll come back to seasonal customs in a minute and so on. Um, so, Chain dances were the medieval form of dance, social dance. And most folk dances uh, up to the present day are relics of the past. If necessary, the local memory is what can your grandparents remember? They're the last survivors of, of the past, as it were, who you can speak to. Um, so usually it's what was popular 60 or 70 years ago. Uh, certainly true when old-time dancing got going after the First World War and so on. Um, you know, it was the, just a recovery of the past. Um, we have our origins, that's Coxwell Morris, that being the kind of, uh, topic of this weekend, um, in about 1700. Playford published books of dance notations during the Civil War. Now, the Civil War meant that social gatherings in assembly rooms and so on didn't happen. People danced in their home, so there was a need for guidebooks. But all his dancers come from his friends, who were people who either wrote the mask that were used um, uh, in the big houses and uh, by royalty, or the theatrical plays of the time. There's no evidence from modern research that any of these had their origin in folk. There are a half dozen um, notations before Playford of dancers, some of which have titles as in Playford, but they don't include the up and back a double siding and hands round type figures. They are much simpler. In fact, they're much more like the surviving folk dances for most of the country. They are reels and stepping and things of that sort. Um, if you don't believe that's the way it was, Thomas Hardy wrote to the EFDSS, EFDS, as it was, about 1920, to say he remembers the assembly dancers, that's the long ways dancers for as many as well as on, arriving amongst the country people about 1840. Because he played with his father in a band, and they had to play they played originally for the reels and step dancers, um, and then they gradually learnt to play um, for the long ways dancers. Because 
The long range dancers were done in the assembly rooms, that's middle class and, and upper middle class, um, passed down to the servants, and then passed down to the more ordinary people. Now, it's important to recognise that that happened, um, and the reason why it happened is that um, starting with um, the time, the Restoration, Charles II, um, it became the fashion for inheritance to be for the eldest of the family, eldest son, um, primo, whatever it is. Um, that meant that the other members of the family did not actually inherit the bulk of the estate. So that they financially gradually slipped down the thing. A professor, I think it's Aberystwyth, has been researching via wills how these estates were passed on and what happened to the second and oh, uh, younger members of the family. And over five or six generations, they gradually slipped down from the aristocracy into the middle class, down to the working class. Why didn't the working class swamp them? Well, because poverty does not actually uh, go for survivability. You know, the unfortunate poverty is your kids die young. So it's the people who are better off who actually end up dominating society. And those are the people who take the culture down with them. Now, the earliest references I have found to Morris dancing um, in the period um, really from 1550 to 1750, very commonly used the word yeoman as doing the Morris. Now, what you have to understand is that society consisted of peers, esquires, gentlemen, yeomen, and farmers, then the rest of the labourers, and so on. Yeoman was a reasonably elite part of society. And you have to appreciate that really, uh, the Morris as it first appeared, um, well, in Spain 1600, the six Morris dancers uh, at um, Brackley gave silver plate to the church. Yeah, this is not working class activity. You know, these are people who are actually doing well in society. The people who were invi invited to do the performance in the processions and so on were the people who were highly thought of. In my time, we're talking about 50 years ago, um, in the Cotswold, that's Bampton and Chipping Camden, there was a, an Abingdon for that matter, we differentiated between the Morris dancers and the mummers. The Morris dancers drank beer, the mummers drank cider. The Morris dancers were respectable and asked to dance on your lawn. The, Morris the mummers actually were not quite so respectable, um, a bit disreputable in other words, and were asked to dance in the kitchen and things of that sort. There was a social difference. That has disappeared in the last 50 years, and I'm glad... In many ways, I'm glad it, it has done, and so on. But you have to recognise the past is a different sort of word. Um, was it involved for the Moors? I have found no reference to uh, the Moors other than doing, they learnt military uh, movements to music. Unlike a British army, which learnt to the sergeant major shaving at them, um, the Moors used to do it all to music. And that may be one of the reasons. The Moors certainly uh, were in Spain for about the 8th century, uh, around to the 15th century. They were there for a long, long time and a very strong influence on the culture. If you've ever seen a Morisco being performed, though, Christians versus Moors. Um, one tale I'm aware of, uh, they used about a ton of gunpowder over the weekend as the lines of dancers, so-called dancers, <coughs> with their muskets moved backwards and forwards across the square, shooting in the air, making a lot of noise and things like this. 